This ceremony is a little bit different than what we've done in the past, uh, and it was driven really by all of you student athletes. One of the things that we've discovered, and from my perspective, it's a good discovery, is that you all enjoy one another's company, and you want activities in which not only do you get an opportunity to be with one another, but one in which you get an opportunity to participate. So after you experience tonight's event, I think you'll find that we'll have met both of those goals. Talking about uh, goals, one of the things that, and, and tonight we, we'll uh, highlight a lot of different uh, awards, both individual team awards, both academic, and some team activities as well. But one of the measures that I look at as far as a healthy, vibrant, progressive student or uh, athletic program comes in the form of the academic progress of our student athletes, the competitive highlights and individual performances along with team performances, and some coaching. And are we doing what we best can to achieve from our student athletes and the coaches meeting their mark? And to highlight some of those, I want to talk about a few of those just quickly. In terms of academics, this, uh, within a short, few short weeks here, 46 of you will walk across the stage and will achieve graduation. 13 of you, not of the 46, but of the total student athlete population, have a 4.0 grade point average. Another 59 of you have a grade point average of between 3.5 and 3.9. And then there's a 79 of you whose GPA is somewhere between 3.0 and 3.5. That's a total of 151 student athletes with a 3.0 or better. That represents over a third of our student athlete population. So in terms of academic and academic performance, clearly we're, we're doing that. And I congratulate both our coaches and our student athletes. That's what we're here for. And clearly you're making progress in all those areas. And your graduation rates and your GPAs demonstrate that. So congratulations. I want to highlight one other thing in terms uh, competitive highlights. This year our women's tennis team captured the regular season championship for the first time since 1995. It's been years. Congratulations to women's tennis. They finished with a 20 and 5 record. It's the first time they've achieved 20 wins or more. 10 and 1 in conference play and like I said they won the regular season championship for the first time in 20 years. In addition to, in, to team highlights, I want to congratulate our coaches. Two of them were recognized. Our head women's basketball coach, Duby Plaisance, recognized by the Southland Conference as Co-Coach of the Year, and also by the Louisiana Sports Writers Coach of the Year in women's basketball. Coach Plaisance, congratulations. <laughs> and then also our own Menachi Sundrum, our women's tennis coach. He was recognized for his efforts in women's tennis as Southland Conference Coach of the Year. Coach, congratulations to you. And while I said we'll recognize a lot of you individually and team-wise, there's two that I, I want to highlight because their award uh, brings great recognition to our department uh, in a lot of ways. First is Jenny Nash in women's basketball, who was selected as the Southlands Conference Women's Basketball Student Athlete of the Year. Jenny, congratulations on that. Back here behind me. That is not only based on your competitive performance, but it's academics as well. And then secondly, Stephanie Barnett. Stephanie was recognized as the Southland Conference Player of the Year in women's tennis. So in all those measures, we're, we're achieving the goals that we have set out. We're graduating our student athletes out of what we do. And I do want to recognize them. And I hope uh, they're all here. I've seen some of you. But to start off with Tommy Meyer. Tommy, thank you. Stand up and we'll give you an applause. Tommy's from <laughs> Walter Meyer, Trost Claret Associates. Thank you, Tommy, for coming. Next, I want to welcome Tiffany uh, Tendek from the uh, marketing director at uh, People's Health. I don't know if she's here tonight. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. It's a little dark up here. 
here. I can't see everything. I also want to recognize a longtime sponsor who, who was recognized uh, uh, several uh, year ago for his and his company's uh, dedication to Nichols. They're the longest serving sponsors we've at, had at Nichols, and it's JJ Buque from Buque Distributor. Thank you, JJ. Also, Stephen and Martha Pelche are with us tonight. They have uh, one of the awards tonight. I want to recognize them for the, the Pelche Foundation. And lastly, uh, Greg Stock from Thibodeau Regional. Thibodeau has been a good partner with us, and we're doing some things that no other university is doing in the area of healthcare. And it's because of our partnership with them that we're able to achieve that. And I don't know if Greg is here tonight. Nope? Okay. Well, thank all you sponsors. Without you, again, we couldn't do what we do. To move the program along, let me introduce uh, Bo Hebert and Jenny Nash from women's basketball and our football program. This is a student-athlete driven event, and after you see their performance tonight, you'll appreciate the quality of our student-athletes and what they bring. Thank you, guys. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Bob. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 2015 Colonel Choice Awards. Presented by Thibodeau Regional Medical Center. I'm Jenny Nash. And I'm Bo Daniel Labor the First. And we are the hostess. With the mostess. With that being said, we have a six-man band back there that is going to help us out all night to make you feel more like a real, real, real award show. So. Six man band, where you at? They're catting it. Where you at? Uh, you have anything for us? Uh, no? Okay. Um. There we go. Hey! Okay. So, all with the program. Thank you, Six Man Band. All righty. If you didn't notice, earlier tonight at the social, there were a few people walking around, you know, looking really good. They best were. Dressed. Spicy. Spicy as anything. And if you look inside your program, there will be an insert explaining how to vote for your favorite best dressed male and female. Now, with that being said, please turn your attention to the monitor as we present best dressed male. Number one, BT Sanders, son. Looking good. You might have just won. So, to vote for BT Sanders, tweet at hashtag CCAM1 BT Sanders. BT Sanders. Number two, my boy, Kieran Cronin, coming in hot, looking fresh. Woo! Kieran Cronin, ladies and gentlemen, hashtag CCAM2 for Kieran Cronin. Holding it down. Oh my goodness gracious. Number three, Dash Duncan. Look at this Clark Kent swag. Very excellent choice, Dash. Oh my goodness. Red pants. Hashtag CCAM3 for Dash Duncan. So those are our three males, and one of them is going to be a winner later. So. You will tweet hashtag CCAW1. Can't read that. Hashtag CCAW1. Left, no right, aka low. Number two. We will hashtag CCAW2 for Lauren O'Brien. And number three, Savannah Boswell. Look at Sauber taking home for the best dress. All right, um, you will tweet hashtag CCAW3. And those are the nominees for best dressed female. So now that the nominees have been revealed, you can start voting. Our winners will be announced later tonight with the program. So we're excited about that. Who's the most spiffy? You follow me? All right. All right. Um, we ask that if you win an award tonight, if you're a winner, we ask that you enter through the right side of the stage. Your right, our left. Bo's going to do a very nice demonstration. You'll walk up the stage, everyone's clapping, you're looking nice, feeling good, maybe you're nervous. I don't know, I probably would be. But here's Bo, and that's a very good presentation. That's what you're going to do, alright? That's how it's done. So don't all appear there, just like I did right there. Yeah. Alright. So, now on with the program. I'm um, here to present our first 
introductory academic awards is Nickel State University President Dr. Bruce T. Murphy. He is joined by Slata Ellis from Women's Basketball and Evan Karatsis from Men's Tennis. Thank you. Good job, guys. Um, now, uh, since Jenny mysteriously left the stage, uh, Jenny, what are you doing exactly? Just hanging out with my friend Yo-Yo. I just want to ask her a question. Oh, uh, question time. Okay, I like that. Question to the audience. Yo-Yo, what is your favorite meal from your homeland country of Croatia? Are you serious? <laughs> yes. It's called Sarma. What? It's chicken? Alright, thank you, Yo-Yo. Thank you for your participation. Tastes like chicken. Dr. Berg, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Um, Alright, so now we will have our next presenters, and they are Laura Toodles Neal from softball and Byron B. Cobb from baseball. So give it up for them, too. is given to the team with the highest cumulative GPA in the last academic year. Finalists for the President's Award for Academic Excellence are the soccer team, men's tennis, and women's tennis. The President's Award for Academic Excellence goes to women's tennis. <laughs> Thank you. 
to present our next award for student athlete academic excellence is Tessney Carruthers from women's track and field and Sam McBeth for men's basketball. The Student Athlete Award for Academic Excellence goes to the student athlete who has recorded the highest cumulative grade point average. The finalists for the Student Athlete Award for Academic Excellence are Kaylin Gia for Volleyball, Jeffrey Hebert for Football, and Clara Skopak for Women's Tennis. The recipient of the Student Athlete Award for Academic Excellence is Kaylin is a senior from Peoria, Arizona. She was named to the 2014 COSIDA Capital One Academic All-American Division I Third Team, COSIDA Academic All-District First Team, Southland Conference Volleyball All-Academic First Team, and the Fall 2014 Southland Conference Commissioner's Academic Honor Roll. Kaylin graduated in December and could not be here tonight. Accepting the award on Kaylin's behalf is her teammate, Robin Sim. season was a, was a good year for us. Uh, started out with uh, low expectations from the conference, pick 12, and started the year trying to find out who we were, what we needed to do in the gym. Started out with four tough tournaments, uh, Southern Miss, uh, UL Louisiana, then off to Mississippi State, highlighted by a match on, on ESPN, on the, on the SEC Network, um, and then finally Jacksonville, and North Florida were ready to get into our conference schedule. Um, rolled into the conference schedule, and, and I think we surprised a few people. Um, had some good wins early. Went at home against Northwestern State. Uh, went on the road against UNO. Uh, again, home with a five-setter against Abilene Christian. And then the season came down to really the last match, whether we were going to make the tournament or not. Girls stepped up, did a great job, took care of business at home, winning in three against McNeese, uh, prepared themselves for the conference tournament, and snuck in as the eighth seed, and had a nice match against the one seed, Stephen F. Austin, and from there gave them all they could handle in a tight match. Uh, lost a close one in three, but, but I think really looks good for the future. I think we surprised a few people, got some respect, some well-deserved respect, both in the conference voting, and two, two players named to all conference team, Casey Eaton and Kayla Nagia. Um, and the postseason, the accolades kept rolling in with, with Kayla also being named Academic All-American. So from there, we think it's a great, a great springboard forward. We improved um, tremendously from the year before, and, and we look to build that into the future. So I can see bright things for the volleyball program coming in 2015. Give it up for volleyball. I seem to have lost my co-host. He's somewhere out there, maybe asking you a question. Right no. here, Jenna. All right, Bill. Right here. But who do you have there? Uh, I'm with my boy, Sean Epinet, who I just heard from his fellow buddies here. He doesn't know how to spell pencil. <laughs> so it's like, so we're going to do like a spelling bee. Do you want the language of origin or anything? So I say, Sean, step up. <laughs> Can I have the letter of origin, please? The word first is pencil. Uh, can I get into a sentence? I have a nice pencil. <laughs> can I get a definition, please? It erases your memory. I'm going to go with uh, P E N C I L. Excellent job, Sean. Excellent job, baby. Good job, Sean. We are now at the ring of Ashley Johnson from Track and Field and Sebi O'Neill from Men's Cross Country to present our next award. They are joined by Tommy Meyer from Walters Meyer Trust Blair and Associates. Good night, everybody. Um, the Norman Suwana Community Service Award is given to the team who is most involved in the community, dedicated and 
committed to the university and exemplifies the spirit of Nickel State University. And the nominees are baseball, football, and softball. The winner of the Norman Swanner Community Service Award is baseball. Over the years, she's the head coach, Seth Thibodeau. The baseball team frequently visits local elementary schools and the Thibodeau Regional Medical Cancer Center. They are involved in a town cleanup where they walk around campus and the city cleaning up litter. They also run in local charity races, work with Dixie Youth Baseball, and even shave their heads in support of the Versus Cancer Foundation to help promote life-saving childhood cancer efforts. so much ahead of us to accomplish and we're excited about it but uh, we're just trying to do our best for Nichols you know all the coaches work extremely hard here have had lots of success here uh, still kind of waiting for this new football coach to do something I'm not sure about him he's the new golden boy around here or, or um, silver silver boy around here but uh, we'll see it's time for him to kind of do something so we'll see what he's made up this fall give up the baseball Many of our teams have had that one big win that turned their season around, provided hope for the future, or in some cases, reached a new milestone. As voted on by the fans, the nominees for Game of the Year are... Baseball at LSU, February 18, 2015. Nichols jumped out to an early 6-0 lead and never looked back as the Colonels upset 4th-ranked LSU 6-3 at Olive Box Stadium in Baton Rouge, handling the Tigers their first loss of the season. Seth Stevens led Nichols offensively, going 2-for-5 with a double, triple, two RBIs and a run. Nichols registered a dozen hits on the night with nine different players contributing at least one. Ryan Deems got the start for the Colonels, tossing four scoreless innings with six strikeouts. Alex Ernestine picked up the win and Stuart Holmes recorded the save, shutting down the Tigers in an inning and two-thirds of relief. Softball versus Stephen F. Austin, March 7, 2015. All appeared to be lost for the Colonel softball team. After Nicholas fell in game one of a doubleheader in Thibodeau, SFA's Caitlin Stanley belted a two-run homer in the seventh inning of the nightcap to put the Lady Jacks up 6-2. to two. That's when Nichols kicked it into gear, piecing together five hits in their final schedule, turned it back. Alexis Hutz got the rally going with a bases loaded RBI single, chasing in Peyton Grenion. Next up, Haley Parkerson made it a 6-4 contest with a sacrifice fly, scoring Kayla Prater. With the home team down to their final out, Jessica Taylor sent the first pitch she saw into left center, a two-run double that planted Danielle Phillips and Huss to force extra innings. In the bottom of the eighth, Grenion doubled with one out to put the winning runner in scoring position. Two batters later, Crater beat out an infield single to second, and the ball sailed past the first baseman, allowing Grenion to come home for the walk-off victory. The Colonels would clinch the series the next day. 
Soccer versus McNeese State, November 6, 2014. The Nichols soccer team headed to Beaumont, Texas for the opening round of the Southern Conference Tournament in search of their first postseason victory in school history. Taking on McNeese State, goalie Taylor Mosley was an impenetrable wall, facing 15 shots and recording five saves in the shutout. In the 71st minute, Kaylee Daniels found Hannah Savoy across the middle. Spencer Valdespino flew by Savoy, taking possession of the ball in the process before shooting from the top of the box. Her shot beat McNeese goalkeeper Lauren Sestak, climbing the back of the net. The Colonels, energized by the score, found another gear for the remainder of the match and kept McNeese on an almost constant defensive. As the final seconds ticked down, the reserve players for Nichols jumped up and down, loudly counting along for the last 10 seconds before storming the field. And the that win so I'm not going to ask you that but what kind of feeling was going through your body when you saw that clock count down and you're like yes we are winning this game getting our first ever conference tournament win just explain that as best you can um elated I was probably the most excited I've ever been in my entire life um just to be able to be a part of this team with all the individuals that we have we play as a team and um couldn't be happier to be a part of this team and to have that win, so. Congratulations, soccer. It was a good game. I watched it. Nice. Here we are again. It's that time of year. Uh, seems like the season was just starting back in August. Uh, another great year for us. You know, it, it's another opportunity as well for me to go ahead and kind of brag about our team, especially in, in public. Uh, so I'm going to take this opportunity. You know, I felt like we had a great year. Uh, started the season early. Uh, going ahead and getting a victory against Southern Miss, one of our first times to ever beat them. I think we went on to go ahead and beat three teams that we had never beat uh, in our 15 years of existence. So that was awesome. Uh, to go ahead and really strive and, and, and push ourselves throughout the season uh, to do the things we needed to make a conference tournament, um, all the way to go ahead and win our first conference tournament game. Uh, that, that was huge for us. Uh, so, so in terms of where we've been and what we've been able to accomplish, can't say enough about this team. I'm just very proud of you guys, and, and I really appreciate all the hard work and sacrifices that you guys have put in to getting to this point. Um, the tough part about it now is, you know, can we go ahead and continue to raise the bar? Uh, the tough part about it now is, you know, every time we break a record, it's one of our old records. Uh, so, but that's great. It's a great situation to be in. I do also want to just go ahead and kind of comment about how, uh, how special this season has been for all of our sports. Uh, since being here for, I can't believe it's been six years now, this has by far been the best uh, year we've had for our sports. And I just want to say congratulations to all of you guys, uh, especially the women's programs. You guys have really stepped it up this year uh, and really set the bar and, and challenged the, hopefully challenge the men's programs to keep pace with us. Uh, so the challenge has been thrown out. Good luck. Uh, very proud of this past year, but realizing it's just setting the tone for next year. And now to present our Colonel Pride Awards are Landry Klum from football and Elise Barclay from volleyball. Joining Landry and Elise are Tasha Matthews from the Hampton Inn and Suites of Thibodeau and Jerry Lede, President and CEO of Synergy Bank. The Colonel Pride Award is given to a male and female student athlete who truly are an inspiration to their fellow colonels. He and she have exhibited pride in their academic endeavors, their teammates, their community, and Nichols State University. The nominees for the Female Colonel Pride Award are Marie Olbia, Women's Tennis. <laughs> Hannah Haydell, Softball. <laughs> and Jenny Nash, Women's Basketball.
And the male Colonel Pride Award nominees are Ryan Deems, baseball. Jadante Fry, men's basketball. And Stephen LaBeouf, football. And the recipients of the, of the Colonel Pride Award are Jenny Nash, women's basketball. And Ryan Deems, baseball. Team, a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Student Athlete Advisory Committee, and Student Hall of Fame, Jenny Still sets aside time to give back to the community by visiting local elementary schools and cancer patients at the hospital, while leading her team in the most conference wins in school history and achieving several major individual awards on and off the court. Jenny can be seen at any and all events on campus, supporting all athletic teams and organizations. A senior pitcher for the Colonel Baseball team, Ryan attended every home football game and soccer match this past fall, along with many Vincent Rhodes basketball games. Voted by his teammates as this year's captain, Ryan is one of the top pitchers in the Southland Conference. In addition to his workload in the classroom and on the field, Ryan spends countless hours out in the community with his teammates. He is set to graduate from Nichols in May with a great chance of playing professional baseball. Colonel Pride, I can just see it in you guys, so I'm going to ask you all a question, because some people don't have it. Most of us in here do have it, though. What What is Colonel Pride to you? You know, Colonel Pride nationwide. I love this school. I love these people. That's what it means to me. That's, that's, that was deep. That is good stuff. Thank you. Colonel Pride. Uh, you know, to get back to the school that I chose, uh, it means a lot. And uh, go Colonels. Yeah, go Colonels. Absolutely. Clip coming? No, we don't. I heard from the back. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. um, we would now like to mention that voting for the best dressed award has ended. I've been excited for this. You excited? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I know who I voted for. Anyways, all right. We will begin totaling up votes, and the winner will be announced later in the night. I thought that was the announcement. Okay, we'll come back later on that. And now we'd like to bring up Carrie Spann from softball and Josh Full of Love, who is full of love from golf, to present our next two awards. Please forgive them for the way they are dressed. They just walked out from the weight room. There you go. The most improved. Lift award goes to male and female who have bought into their team's training program and have shown great improvements in technique, strength, power. These athletes have been coachable and take feedback on areas to improve and will lead them to success on the field. And the female nominees are Akaya Gray, women's basketball. Anna Gouge, thank you, soccer. And Jackie Johnson, softball. The male nominees are Alex Ernstein, baseball. Seth Keller, football. And Kyle Noff, baseball. And the winners are Anna Gouge from soccer and Alex Bernstein from baseball.
of the Year Award goes to the male and female that demonstrates dedication and commitment to everything that we do in the weight room. It is not only determination by their marks and strength, speed, and power, but also the ability to demonstrate the leadership qualities needed for a team, for team to be successful. The female nominees are Saleda Ellis from Women's Basketball, Peyton Grimion from Softball, and Jean-Marie Gil Guillory from Women's Basketball. And the male nominees are Michael Henry, football. Darius Knight, baseball. Jason McDonald, baseball. John Marie Guillory from Women's Basketball. And Darius Knight from baseball. I will now knight Darius Knight. <laughs> and I will now knight John Marie Guillory. It doesn't work like that because she doesn't have knight behind her. She's, she's still at night though. She's still lifter of the year. He could probably beat you up, Bo. It's probably true. Sorry, okay. Right. Anyways. So, lifter of the year. I got a quick question for you. You know they got a lot of ladies in here, right? You, you, are you looking around? Oh my gosh, and you're the lifter of the year. You want to give him a little flex pose for me? <laughs> hey, yeah, okay, okay, okay. That's all we needed. That's like, you know, that's good, yeah. All right. Terry Scott, ladies and gentlemen. And ladies, actually, not gentlemen. All right. Hi, John Marie. Hey, Jen. Look, I've known you for about four years, and I know that I was probably, like, one of your biggest inspirations in the weight room, probably why you lifted so much. But... I, I'll give myself credit, you don't have to, but what was, what, what brought about you becoming lifter of the year? Why are you so strong, basically? Um, Greg? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a drive to help my team be the best, and I want to give a shout out to Salada, who was also a nominee, my team. Thanks, John. This basketball season was uh, a trying one for everyone involved. The guys uh, played a brutal preseason schedule, actually played against the uh, national runner-up Wisconsin Badgers. Um, a lot of uh, adversity in preseason, battling injuries, lost our senior leader in Shane Elier. We was really pleased that we rallied down the stretch. Uh, we had some guys step up and um, do what they needed to do to put us in position to uh, make a little run in the postseason. Unfortunately, that didn't happen for us, but I did feel like we ended the season on a high note with great effort uh, from the guys that were out there on the floor. The exciting thing is that we didn't have any seniors. We got this whole group back, and we're very, very excited about the prospects for next season. We would now like to bring up Stephanie Barnett from Women's Tennis and Alex Tuck, A. Tuck, from Baseball to present this year's Freshman Student Athlete of the Year Awards. Joining them are Tiffany Tandecki, Assistant Director of Marketing for People's Health and President of Bouquet Distributing, J.J. Bouquet. The nominees for the Freshman Student Athletes of the Year are from the women's side, Tia Charles, women's basketball. Peyton Gremion, softball. And Catherine Kelly, soccer. And on the men's side, Jeffrey Hebert, football. Joey Morales, baseball. And Lucas Sapin, golf. And the 2015 Freshman Student Athletes of the Year are <laughs> Peyton Gremion, softball. <laughs> Joey Morales, baseball.
what do you think made Nicholas a good fit for you? Um, I really like the coaches on the visit. Um, had a good feel to this place, and uh, I just knew what they were trying to do, and um, that Coach Tibb does a great job of making you a better person on and off the field, and I came here to uh, hopefully uh, win a championship. Um, I, uh, I really like the team, uh, has a good feel, uh, can I start that one over? You threw me off when you told me I had a few extra seconds, and I was like, wait, what? Alright, what's the question? This team really has a good atmosphere. Uh, we've worked hard in the fall and with workouts and conditioning. So it uh, really builds a good team chemistry leading up to the season. And uh, I think we've grown more and more as a team uh, the deeper we get into the season. Um, it's been a been a great ride here at Nichols. Um, you know, we made it to the conference tournament last year. Didn't end how we wanted it, wanted it to. Um, but this year, we've uh, you know we've had a pretty good year, and we know we're playing the uh, playing good baseball here at the right time. So hopefully that we can uh, continue to build off that and and do something more this year. Uh, I, I believe I'm a leader. Uh, being around uh, for four years, uh, learned a lot in my junior college, and then last year we had a great group of seniors, so that helped out a lot. And um, I just try to continue to be the best I can on and off the field for the younger guys. We, uh, we're playing good right now, and like I said, I hope we can uh, continue that and win a conference championship this year because that's our ultimate goal, and uh, we want the season to last as long as possible. That's okay. Um, we have uh, we've had a good year, and hopefully we can continue it and uh keep the season going as long as possible so we want to win uh, the conference tournament and get into a regional and um, you know see what goes from there. Um, I think the biggest thing taken away from my time here is just uh, what a great experience has been for two years and met a lot of uh, great guys and um, had some good coaches. So I'll be able to take a lot in anything I do at the uh, next step of my life and be able to look back on this, uh, this two-year experience here. Um, I think the biggest thing that I'm going to miss is uh, just the guys and the atmosphere that we've always had and um, the chemistry over the past two years. Um, I'm not going to miss conditioning very much, but uh, I will miss everything with, uh, with the guys and, and getting to play such a good game. Um, I would love to get to keep playing baseball as long as I can, so 
Um, if that opportunity comes, then that'd be a great experience. And if not, then, uh, I'm gonna hope to coach and teach somewhere. So that's that's what I've got. Uh, favorite memory. Um, I guess just being with uh, being with everybody every day. Uh, we have a lot of fun uh, in the clubhouse, and it's just it's always a good feel with each other. I choked on the line. Southern Conference in batting average heading into the final weekend. Remyon started 27 games and is second on the team with a 354 batting average. For the year, the Curvers lead off here has cracked up four doubles, a triple, eight RBIs, and has a perfect fielding percentage in center field. She's a strong candidate for all Southland Conference first team and freshman of the year. After losing a number of starters from last year's club, Joey Morales has been one of the brightest spots for the Nichols baseball team this year. Morales has started every game as a freshman and been a virtually impenetrable ball at the difficult shortstop position. Morales routinely makes extraordinary plays look effortless. Offensively, Morales has scored 12 runs and driven in six. Um, the majority of student athletes turn to social media, especially Twitter, to tell the world what they're doing or how they are feeling. In fact, these three colonels are probably tweeting as I speak. However, only one will be named Tweeter of the Year. At this time, please turn to the video screen. With the help of, of a few of our head coaches, the nominees for Tweeter of the Year are... Brooke Morris at Brooke Ash 2305. Having a twin makes simple tasks easier, like hanging off the bed while she holds onto your feet to grab the remote that just fell off the bed. Number two, if I could put on makeup half as good as drag queens, I would be set for life. <laughs> and number three, every time I see a Gatorade commercial, I get so mad because I cannot sweat the color of the Gatorade I drink. <laughs> Grant Bourne, at Grant Bourne 24. Blonde hair and some jean shorts. What else can you ask for? <laughs> Hashtag The Bachelor. One day we're going to write a children's book about a claustrophobic groundhog who overcomes his fears. Hashtag millions, hashtag dibs. Wouldn't mind a pair of boxers with some pockets. And don't tell me that's basically the same as shorts because it's different. Hashtag LSU quarterback battle. Sam Macbeth, at Sam Macbeth, let me live, stop sign, let me live. What does that mean? Do you think hippos ever make rhinos for one of their mates from behind? And then they're like, sorry man, I thought you were Justin. And nothing gets me more jacked up for game day than Sex in the City reruns. The 2015 Tweet of the Year is Sam McDowell and Basketball. Since you're such a great teammate for Sam McBeth and he is not in attendance, 
I want you to answer for him because we all wanted to know what his, what do you think his inspiration for those tweets were? Um, he hangs with Adam Ward and um, they both just weird, you know? <laughs> hey, that's true teammates, okay, okay, all right. Back to you, Jenny. Hello, everyone. I I think we have a softball clip coming at you. Back to the softball clip. I think the 2015 season was very, very successful for us because we we added, you know, our transfers, our, our returners, and then we, we, we added some freshmen and that just did a great job all year long for us. And I'm really proud of this group for doing exactly what they were asked to do, uh, the sacrifices, the time spent. And uh, I, I can just say that everything that we got past a certain point was just bonus this year, and I'm really proud of this group. I think the cool thing is, too, is that, you know, we're not done yet. We've still got a lot of work to do, and we're trying to finish the season off and obviously make it to postseason, which would be a first in the last few years here at Nickel State. And um, we're really excited. I think we're really excited about what the ladies have done, the re resilience that they've shown. Um, but I think probably the most proud thing is their team chemistry. Um, it's something that we've been working really hard on. We've added the mental training to their, their um, program, and I think they've taken that and just run with it. So I'm just really proud of them um, and, our, and our coaching staff that we've just been able to keep pushing and, um, you know, ride the peaks definitely and keep our valleys, uh, you know, really short and uh, just continue to move forward. And, and like I said, we're not done yet. I think we've got a lot more uh, stuff to accomplish, and I think the ladies are hungry, which is pretty cool. So I'm really proud of them. Very good, team. Very proud of them. And Keeping with the topic of social media, we turn to another aspect, Facebook. Fans were asked to log into their Facebook accounts and vote for the play of the year. There were many great moments throughout the season, but these three stood out from the rest. Jamarcus Horace is dunk versus UNO on yes. Stuff Stover Night, February 2nd, 2015. Jamarcus Horace sent a pack Stouffer gym into a frenzy with a breakaway thundering dunk with a little under 12 minutes to go in the first half of a 12-point victory for our Cowboys and in-state rival UNO on Stuff Stouffer Night. Horace's dunk went on to draw national attention as ESPN's must-see moment of the day. Alexis Huss's walk-off home versus Texas a and Corpus Christi, March 21st, 2015. Heading into the bottom of the seventh inning, trailing 11-8, the Colonels put together four runs on four hits as junior Alexis Huss blasted a 1-0 pitch over the right center field wall for a two-run home run and a dramatic walk-off 12-11 victory. Andre Bjornsson wins a playoff for the individual crown at the Red Wolves Intercollegiate, April 5th, 2015. Senior Andre Bjornsson sank a 25-foot birdie on the second hole of a sudden-death playoff at the Red Wolves Intercollegiate in Jonesboro, Arkansas, to claim his first career individual title. Bjornsson finished with a three-round score of 212. It was the Iceland Natives' sixth top ten finish of the season. Get him off. The Excellent dunk, cheese The 2014-2015 golf uh, season for the uh, for the Colonels was one that showed a lot of improvement. We had five freshmen uh, out of eight players, so that was definitely a, a bit of a learning uh, curve for, for not only the players, but for me as a coach as well. We showed constant improvement, which was something that was a definite positive um, from our fall semester in through 2015. Our last four tournaments of the spring semester, we finished the team did in the upper half. In addition to that, senior Andre Bjornsson um, had six top ten finishes individually out of eight events. 
one of those being a tie for 11th at the Louisiana Monroe. With that, he had a 73-stroke uh, average per round and capped off his season with an individual win at Arkansas State, finishing the first individually out of over 121 Division I golfers. Going into next year, uh, we have a lot of returning freshmen that will have more experience, and I'm looking for positive things for my golf program here at Nichols. And now for the main event, we would like to reveal tonight's best dressed male and female. Earlier tonight, we posted the top three best dressed men and women in our audience. You guys saw them. And we asked you to take to Twitter and vote for your favorites. We have those votes, Jenny. The votes have been tallied. And this year's best dressed male and female are... Drum roll. Drum roll. Gentlemen, my goodness, being a fashionista myself, stay here, stay here, Dash Duncan. Clark Kent, come on. All right. Being a fashionista myself, I must say, lovely dress, gonna get a spin around. Oh, 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 ladies and gentlemen. So, um, who are you wearing, my dear? Say it again. Adidas. Adidas? <laughs> hey, Nichols, wear Adidas. That's it right there. Beautiful oh, job, sister. Okay, moving on. Dash Duncan. First, let me. Prescription? Yeah, you look better than those. Okay, um, besides that though, your outfit was amazing. Um, who are you wearing, buddy? Because this is just beautiful here. Red pants. That's the sway. The sword. The sword. Here you go. This is uh, Dillard's Finest right here out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Dillard's Finest, Dash Duncan. Ladies and gentlemen, the two best dressed, male and female, give it up for them again. Our team is 60 seconds in the stream channels. First of all, I'd just like to thank each individual on my team for making me a better coach, making us better as a coaching staff. I appreciate each and every challenge that we've had to endure, and I accept the challenge and love you all dearly for making me a better person. First of all, men's cross country, Saturday, Reese, and Kane. You've been a background to this program now for four years. I thank you for every mud hole that we've had to hurdle, to every sugar cane field that we've run, for the jokes, the laughs, the tears, and the sweat. You guys have all done a substantial job. Thank you so much. Women's Cross Country. Our captains have been Tessie Carruthers, Ashley Johnson. We have a lot of young women on our team. A lot of girls that have come over, a lot of women that have gone from different events on track and field and joined the cross country team, and I welcome you. Thank you. Thank you for embracing the challenge. And as you see in this season right now as we are in outdoor, you've accepted it, and you've been better at your individual event. Indoor track and field. Our seniors, Tessie, Quadri, Simone, and Ashley, you guys are doing it, and I want to thank you. You've tried new things and new events. You've accepted each and every challenge with very, very minimal groans and pains. Thank you so much. We have a lot of young women on our team that have looked up to you, and they accept and embrace each and every challenge. Right now, we're in outdoor track and field. We are doing a great job. Throughout our indoor and outdoor track and field season, Every single woman on my, on my team has had a personal best. That's a huge accomplishment. It makes us better for the outdoor season into the indoor season. And thank you, ladies, for doing that. To end our cross country, indoor and outdoor season, Tessa Carruthers has been honored in the Commissioner's Cup. And also honored as a Southland Conference Academic Award. Michelle Lowell has qualified for the NCAA Championships first round at Jacksonville, Florida, which is coming up at the end of May. To every single person on this team here at Nichols State, I love you, and God bless. Our Team of the Year Award is an all-encompassing honor that takes into account on-field accomplishments, performance in the classroom, and contributions to campus and community life. 
So the nominees for the team of the year are baseball, women's basketball, soccer, and women's tennis. Let's open it up. Okay. And the winner is women's tennis. Yeah. After ending a 15 year postseason round last season, the Nipples women's tennis team put an end to another streak this year by winning the South Dakota's regular season championship for the first time since 1995. The Colts posted a 20 and 5 dual match record with a 10 and 1 mark in league play to earn the top seed in the Southland tournament. In postseason play, Nipples captured two wins to reach the championship match for the first time in 20 years. Along with winning a regular season title, the 20 victories are the most for a single season in program history. Congratulations, Women's Tennis. Awards of the night, you'll win a great crowd. We bring up Anna Gouge from soccer and Stephen McBuff from football to present the Student Athlete of the Year Awards. They will be joined by Stephen and Martha Pelche from the Pelche Foundation and Tony Martinez of Thibodeau Regional and Medical Center. The nominees for the Female Student Athlete of the Year are Stephanie Barnett, Women's Tennis, <laughs> Jess Coates, Soccer, <laughs> and Jenny Nash, Women's Basketball. The nominees for the Male Student Athlete of the Year are Andre Bjarnson, Golf, Michael Henry, Football, and Stuart Holmes, Baseball. And the 2015 Student Athletes of the Year are Stephanie Barnett, Women's Tennis, and Stuart Holmes, Baseball. so successful in just two years here? Well, of course, my team and my coach are the main uh, inspiration, I guess. They've helped me a lot through it all. Um, we've all done it together. It's not just not just one person in the team, and my coach especially, like, he's really pushed me, and yeah. Congratulations, Stephanie. Now, Stu, 
how have you grown into the male male student athlete of the year award? Like what? So you know, your first year you played everything. How have you grown from that year to what you have become? Uh, I think just continuing to uh, be a leader on and off the field as good as I can, and uh, I have great teammates that always help push me to become the best I can. Excellent job, Stu. Give it up for male student athlete of the year, Stu. Um, I always said that those were the last awards, but there actually is one more award for tonight. Um, and it goes to the Dancer of the Year Award. We actually only had one nominee for this, and therefore she is the winner. Everyone give it up for Imani White from the women's basketball team. With that amazing performance to close out the night, we'd like to thank everybody who had a great time, and uh, congratulations to all of our winners and uh, all people that support athletics. And give it up for the six man band. They're going to get me this time. Six man band, where you at? Give it up for folks. So now, in closing remarks, I'd like to uh, call upon Nichols President, Dr. Bruce Murphy, to uh, close out the night. Thank you. Thank you, man. And thank you, Bo and Jenny. Great job tonight. Let's hear it for uh, Bo and Jenny. You know, as Division I intercollegiate athletes, you are special, uh, each and every one of you. And tonight we've uh, focused on, on, on the past, pretty much, uh, but you are marked for life. And others are going to wish that they had the experiences that you have had. You will be asked on many occasions to speak, occasions like this and other occasions. So I want to give you some advice to use. Uh, by the way, on the way up here, Gene told me there's no such thing as a, a short, bad speech. So. Uh, point number one, be inspiring. Point number two, make it personal. Point number three, be interesting and or funny, have a gimmick. And point number four, don't leave anybody out. So I'm going to share a gimmick that I use sometimes when I speak. You can, you're free to use it in all your speaking engagements into the future. And that is, I always look and say, what happened this day in history? And I always try to relate whatever happened this day in history uh, to the event or the audience or some aspect of what's going on. So this was a bit of a challenge because uh, to pick something that happened on the 4th of May for every one of your sports is not an easy task, but let me give it a try. So in basketball, this day in history, in 1968, the first ABA championship, if you don't know what the ABA is, ask your parents or your grandparents, but the uh, first ABA championship was the Pittsburgh Pipers beat the New Orleans Buccaneers four games to three. In 1970, Dawn Staley was born in Philadelphia. She's the basketball guard and won the Olympic gold in 1996. Track and field in 1981, Silvana Cruciata ran a 15 kilometer, uh, ran 15 kilometers and set a world record in 49-44. In volleyball, in 1967, uh, John Child was born, a beach volleyball player, won the Olympic bronze in 96. And in 1972, Ethan Watts was born, uh, and he was a volleyball middle blocker in the Olympics 1996. In tennis, in 1998, Thomas Enqvist defeated Andre Agassi in the BMW Open. It's hard to find tennis matches in May. Uh, golf, 1989, Rory McElroy was born 
who won the uh, 2011 Open, U.S. Open and the 2012 PGA Championship in soccer. In 1901, Herbert Herb Wells uh, uh, was, uh, uh, was born. He was a 1924 Summer Olympian. Uh, in 1987, uh, Cesc Fabreas helped lead the Spanish team to the first ever World Cup Championship 2010. In football, I know you're waiting for this, 1932, uh, Harlan Hill was born. Uh, and he was uh, he was a rookie of the year in 1954, and the Jim Thorpe winner the following year, and the NFL Player of the Year in '55. Uh, in baseball, uh, in 1929, on this date in 1929, Lou Gehrig hit three consecutive home runs, and the Yankees beat the Tigers 11 to nine. And finally, as a tribute to all of the coaches, this day in history, four. Uh, May in 1931, one of the greatest managers ever, Joe McCarthy of the uh, New York Yankees. He won seven World Series titles, but uh, on this particular day, he wanted to put a little less stress on Babe Ruth's legs, so he moved Babe to uh, first base, and he moved first baseman Lou Gehrig, who a lot of people said was the best first baseman ever, into right field. Well, Lou committed a couple of errors that the Yankees lost, uh, and that was the last time that Lou pay, played right field. Um, what, what do athletes bring to a university? And I've said this a couple of times before, but first of all, the opportunity for you to take your skill and passion to the next level. I know you're all appreciative of that. Uh, number two, it's a rallying point for the rest of the student body. And number three, it's branding for the institution. We thank you for all of that. And I've said this on several occasions, but yesterday uh, I was reminded of a fourth gift that you have to give us. I was driving back to Thibodeau from Longview, Texas. You see, my little doggy, my border collie, Dewey, had outgrown the president's residence and we were taking him to go to my daughter's farm so he could start a new career herding animals. And I was feeling a little bit sad and missing Dewey and somewhere around Alexandria, I tuned in to 6.40 a.m. And believe it or not, I got the voice of the Colonel, our own Mike Wagenheim, who we heard so much tonight. And then the familiar mantra of the lineup as the game progressed, Simbaldi, Holt, Reese, Carrera, Zorn, Knight, Frazier, and so on. And the two hours passed very quickly. And in my mind's eye, I was back in the friendly confines of the did, and all was good. And I want to thank you, those of you who play, those of you who broadcast, those of you who train, those of you who coach, those of you who equip, those of you who support, those of you who sponsor. And I don't want you to ever forget that the sports that you love, the sports that you are passionate about, have the power to transform and inspire and soothe. And I want to thank you all for being Colonel's athletes. So I hope you had a great evening tonight. Congratulations to you all. Look forward for great things in the future. And have a great evening. We actually have a little quick glitch in the system here, and we have a video that we failed to show. We're going to show it now. It is women's basketball. Good evening, and welcome to the Colonel Choice Awards. I am so excited to be talking about our women's basketball program, who once again amazed everyone who had the opportunity to watch them play. They had so many program records, a few highlights, the fourth straight postseason appearance, the fourth straight year with 15 or more wins, the longest winning streak in school's history, and they also had the most conference wins ever in school's history, which landed them the highest seed in program's history. We were led by a dynamic group of seniors. Jean-Marie Guillory, Slade Ellis, Shay Arnick, and Jenny Nash. Their, their courage, their perseverance, and everything that they brought to the team kept our cohesiveness even through adversity. With injuries to Leanne McCarthy and Imani White, we still found a way to do what we were supposed to do and stick to our goals. We also had some individual accolades. Jenny Nash, a number of accolades, but was honored with the Southland Conference Student Athlete of the Year. And also our freshman sensation, Tia Charles, who also was the only freshman recognized on the Southland Conference all-conference teams. This team has made me a better coach, has made me a better person, and has made me so grateful to be a part of not only Nickel State University, but a part of each and every one of their lives. I thank you, I love each and every one of you, and remember, all things are possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. Love you, girls.
And now I'd like to <clears throat> present um, Athletic Director Rob Bernardi to come uh, close this whole thing out. So y'all been great. Thank you. Oh, and Jenny, uh, thank you for your leadership, your humor, and your pride in Nichols State. Thank you very much. They deserve a great deal. <laughs> Round of applause. The other thing, I want to thank our band back there. Those folks uh, not only provide entertainment or basketball games, but they have earned themselves the reputation in the Southland Conference of being by far one of the best pet bands. So guys and gals, thank you for your participation, and you make our events what they are. Thank you. Also, I want to recognize um, Dr. Murphy's wife, Jean, is with us tonight. Thank you for coming along with the President and also our Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Dr. Weaver. I appreciate you all coming out here tonight. One of the good things about my job is not only did I get to work with great coaches and terrific student athletes, but by far I get to have the best staff in the department or in the, in the university, and I really mean that, and they demonstrated that tonight. Little do you know that with probably 45 minutes before this event was supposed to start, the video, or the, neither the video nor the audio in the building was working, so we were frantically trying to put this together. We were wondering whether we would have to either postpone it or move it back into the ballroom, but nevertheless, we got it done, and it was by the hard work and effort from our, our staff in athletics, and I want to recognize them. Michelle Keith, you're going to have to come out behind the uh, curtain there, Michelle. Michelle has put this thing together. It is not easy. Tyler Knowles, who handles our social media stand-up, Tyler. Our sports information folks who help us with the clips, J.B. Bustos and Zach Carlton. Morgan Plot, who helps us in our game uh, management. Morgan, where are you? Around here somewhere. And then also Mike Wagenheim, he's the voice in the back there. <laughs> you can hear him. You know, our, our athletics department, not only our student athletes, but our coaches, and particularly our staff, are, are like family. And we've learned today that we're losing one of our family members, and that gentleman is Mike Wagenheim. At the end of uh, the summer, sometime in early August, he's going to leave Nichols and take a different career challenge. But we owe a lot to him. There is nobody who's got more of what I preach to all of you, the Colonel Pride. Mike doesn't just work his job, he lives his job, and if you've been to his office, you can see that he does that, in fact, live his job. But he makes all of our events sound terrific and bring it to a certain professional level. No need, Mike. So I can think in his mind of no greater honor than to award Mike, if you'll step out here, an honorary Letterman's Award. Mike, you'll always be a Nichols Letterman. We're not done then. One final, we talk about Colonel Pride and what that means and what I preach is pride in yourself, pride in your team, and pride in this university, and you all know how to demonstrate it. And I'm happy when I walk around this campus and I see our student athletes in their Nichols attire. They commute communicate a strong lesson message to our student body and it's a message that hasn't gone away and it's a message that has caught fire because every time I walk a camp across campus I see more and more of our students wearing Nichols attire and being proud of this university. To end tonight, I think the band has something that I'll leave you tonight. You know, one of the things that we have is an ability to laugh at ourselves and you'll see uh, and what I'm talking about here, when we, you know, the coaches are such good people, but some of them, uh, we have video or outtakes of some of those smooth interviews that many of them look like they were seamless, but behind the scenes, uh, we did some good editing, and we're going to show you that. So with that, thank you for all for your attending. I hope this was an event that you as student athletes can be proud of because we are delighted to put it together for you. And I think that it was the type of event that I hope you all were anticipating us having. Thank you and all good night.
Disney trips. I'm going to let you know how it started. We won the most started over. No. How much time do you have to be? To talk about a team in 60 seconds is a real challenge, but I'm going to go ahead and try it anyway. I cannot thank you guys enough. No, stop, 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 stop. Huh. Okay. Okay. As well as a stop. Thank you. No, I can't. I don't even think I want to name names. If I want to name names, I want to coach his name names. Okay, no. But I'm getting back. And then all American prom. <laughs> and and, and, and oh, I'm hoping you might have this on paper and I'd be looking down and looking up and all this other kind of stuff. Academics <laughs> 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 as well as the <laughs> word. Good evening. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Perseverance and diligence in the workout structure of the patterns and stop and just recap one more time. <laughs> there we go. We also had several players win some accolades. So we recognize for accolades. Once again, amaze everybody. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I had it. I had it. So please get that on Instagram right there. Right? <laughs> 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 oh, Shoot, it's time to go. I'm trying to think the summer's over. Whole time's gonna take it. All about me. What's my hair doing? I don't know. You ready?